Stefan, I keep hearing about quantum gravity, and I, I see my physicist friends with such passion and such uh, controversy. It's like a cauldron of, a, of activity. Uh, uh, why, why does quantum gravity stimulate such excitement and such controversy? Because it's witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's the realm, it is the, it, it, quantum gravity is the realm of, of, um, of, ma of magic. It's, you know, there is, when you think about what we've learned about gravity, what Albert Einstein taught us about the true, the true face of gravity, yep. and then you start uh, throwing quantum mechanics, the idea of quantum mechanics in there, yeah, it gets, it, it gets kind of crazy. So let's just define the problem. We have yeah. gravity, people seem to know what that is, but then mm -hmm. Einstein showed us it's a curvature of space-time, very mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on broad scales affecting the cosmology of the universe. Mm -hmm. And then we have the quantum mechanic revolution in the 20th century, which was even more remarkable, if that's possible, uh, showing these very weird things happening at the, at the subatomic level. The thing that is, um, in a sense, weird to speculate about when you bring those two things together, yeah. then what is, what's allowed, um, it's sort of like, imagine that we lived in some, let's do a thought experiment. You're looking at me, I'm looking at you. Right. And we're in a quantum gravitational world. Yeah. Now, the space that you're living in and the space, I'm, we're sharing the same space, mm -hmm. and we're sitting here nice and comfortably. Yeah. Now, gravity tells us that you know, the space is, because we don't weigh much as, as much compared to, say, the sun, right. planet Earth, the space is not going to be curved too much. So we're enjoying a nice flat space, and we're talking right. to each other. Um, that's nice. Um, quantum mechanics says, OK, Give me any situation, and that situation, like a particle, can actually f fluctuate like a wave. Mm -hmm. And that actually happens, and we observe that. We observe effects of matter fluctuating like a wave. Mm. So if you bring these two things together, that means you know, a quantum <laughs> fluctuation. I can, I'm looking at you, all of a sudden I see three of you split <laughs> yeah. up. Right. <laughs> and like, you're both, all three of you are real. <laughs> you know, and I'm talking to three of you, and <laughs> you know, you're probably seeing <laughs> like five of me. Yeah. And, um, or I see a smearing, a of, smearing you. of yeah, yeah it's some just, probability. It's a twenty percent you're here, and nineteen percent you're here, and right. Yeah. And you can even like you know jump into the future a little bit and come right yeah. back. So it's it's, it's do you, is that a, is do we expect these things to be real? Um, we don't see these things. I mean, when I look at you, I don't I don't see what I expect of quantum gravity if I bring quantum mechanics and gravity right, together. Right. So. If quantum gravity does exist, that quantum theory of gravity has to, again, reproduce all of the things that we observe, and then some. Yeah, The theory right. has to work, but it has yeah. to be consistent it with the real world. With everything we observe. Right. Okay. So, so this is part of the problem with quantum gravity, is that we're, we physicists, we're not lacking ideas. We got ideas. Mm. Okay? We, got, we, got, we, got, we got ideas to go. Yeah. Um, the correct idea is the idea that gives us the correct phenomenology. And one of the things I'm interested in is finding that theory of quantum gravity that, that um, gives us back the observed reality that we see, but also explains the mysteries that um, current theories, our current description of nature, does not explain. I think you've made a very important point that what a, a real theory has to do is, first of all, explain the real world as we see it. If you don't explain the real world, you said something beautiful, but it, it, it's just wrong. You have to reproduce the real world. But then you're saying the second step. You have to go further and explain mysteries that we don't have any idea how they work. So you really have two functions. That's right. And they're both, of course, really important. Yeah, and uh, you do one without the other, you just you're just not right. You're doing you're doing black magic, mm. and that's fine. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, if people want to pay me to do black magic. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> well, it's obvious. <laughs> but, um, it's, it's obviously fun, but but it's it, it's serious in the sense that you're you're probing into the most fundamental aspects of, of what reality is. That's right. That's right. Um, now we 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 have. Um, been making progress. It isn't that um, we have been making progress. And the wonderful thing is that the field of, of cosmology can be used as, um, if you want to say, a, you know, a testing ground. Mm. I mean, it's a laboratory. Our universe is a laboratory for quantum gravity. Um, 
So I think this is, we're in very exciting times. Um, where we have experiments uh, and data that we didn't have like you know, 20 years ago. And we will, I mean, heaven knows what we're gonna see in the, in the near future. We might see some really weird things mm. that we, you know, it's coming from left field. Huh. Uh, and what's your own approach? Uh, what's your own uh, uh, orientation? I know there are people who work in string theory, uh, different competitors to string theory, and trying to create uh, uh, a, a unified theory of quantum gravity. I have tremendous um, uh, respect um, for the traditions um, within which, I mean, like if you look at string theory or even loop quantum gravity, they're coming from a, a long tradition of really I mean, well thought out physics um, and techniques and insights into quantum gravity um, and unification of the four, four forces. So I've spent a lot of my energy and, and time um, both um, learning and, and teaching and doing research um, on in, in both fields, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I, I keep, so therefore I keep, an, I keep a very open mind and I let the data point me and guide me. Let the, you know, the, the universe, uh, cosmology actually, since that's my primary field of research, guide me. Um, and I, I like to talk to a lot of my colleagues and we like to, um, if you want to say, um, ver verbally wrestle with one another. <laughs> um, so, well, we're here in Iceland at a convention. Yeah, of, yeah. Uh, of, Quantum physicists and cosmologists—I mean, all together—it's very exciting. It's very exciting, and um, you know, there are a number of people with um, ideas and insights that I'm just learning from. So my approach is first to keep the open mind, to really um, to know your stuff, to really you know try to master your techniques, mm -hmm. but don't limit yourself because you you just don't know where the insight is going to come from. And I just try to keep myself prepared. Um, for those moments, if I'm ever so lucky to have one. 